If your transients are sacrificed for fake loudness, you sound absolutely horrible. Or if you add too much reverb to achieve a huge sound, what do you expect me to do? You need to watch this. You won't believe how these five techniques will boost your career instantly, whether you're a mixing engineer or music producer. I'll reveal the plugins he uses with his specific settings. The last one feels like cheating. Stay tuned. I'm Yek, and I'm about to reveal what I've learned from all of Jason Joshua's tutorials. Hit the subscribe button so you won't miss out on new content. Before we discuss the importance of transients and how to amplify them through some techniques, let's define what a transient is. From percussive elements like drums to melodic ones like vocals, transients refer to the short duration, high amplitude peaks in audio signals. These peaks typically represent the initial attack or impact of a sound, such as the strike of a drum, the pluck of a guitar string, or the attack of a piano note. Let's review some examples. This is a drum loop with well-treated transients. And this one is the same drum loop with all the transients killed. In the context of mixing, the sound with amplified transients is heard better in the mix compared to sounds with weaker transients. Actually, the topic of transients in mixing equals the life of sound. Let's listen to another example, which is a vocal. Here's Katy Perry's studio vocals. I got the eye of the tiger, a fighter. Just pay attention to the beginning of each phrase. As you heard, the mixing engineer perfectly preserved them. While vocals contain longer notes compared to percussive sounds, they also have transients usually at the beginning of each melodic phrase. This is what we need. By the way, Hit the subscribe button so you won't miss out on new videos. Transients contain a lot of energy and contribute to the perceived clarity, punch, and dynamics of a sound. Eliminating transients means eliminating the life of a record and everything that excites you. Listen to this track. Nights, New York to London. It's a great sounding track, and as you can hear, the transients are treated incredibly. Compare it to this track. It's actually super loud, but not as loud as today's songs, because all the transients are eliminated, fully dead. In the analog world, transients were seen as enemies, but as soon as music technology evolved, engineers realized their importance. Lastly, listen to another example. This sounds so tight. There's almost no reverb, and the transients are treated extremely well. So next time you want to mix a song that sounds tight, you can refer to these songs and get an idea of how the track should sound. There are some amazing transient designer tools out there, but here are the selected ones. Tools like SPL Transient Designer, Wave Smack Attack, Ook Sound Spiff, and Isotope Alloy 2, which provides multi-band transient designer. Basically, they act on two parts of a transient, attack and sustain. They manipulate attack transients by making them sharper or smoother and sustain transients by making them more or less prolonged. Let's listen to all of them in action. There's a trick about isotope alloy too, which I'll explain further. Here's smack attack on the drum bus. Here's ook sound spiff. And here's Isotope Alloy 2. Basically, if you're working on a single element of the track, for example, kick or snare or percussion, consider using plugins like Wave Smack Attack or SPL Transient Designer. But if you're working on a more complex sound like drum bus, Isotope Alloy 2 or Spiff can be really good options. Here's my own technique that I utilize with Isotope Alloy 2. During mixing or producing a track, there might be certain sounds like drum bus or synth bus with a huge amount of reverb that clutters your mix, and you don't have enough control to tweak the reverb. You can bring back your transients with Isotope Alloy 2. Simply set the bands accordingly, and instead of increasing the transients, just decrease the sustain down. I usually don't go too far, but minus three or minus four is the sweet spot. Based on your material, you may need different amounts. Which one do you utilize the most? 
Revolutionize your sound by controlling the amount of your reverb. First, listen to this track and pay attention to the tambourine part. As you can hear, it sits very well into the mix while there's nothing conflicting with that tambourine sound. It sounds super dry. There was a time when people tried to achieve a huge sound by adding a lot of reverbs. People like Phil Spector and Brian Wilson from the Beach Boys. They were trying to achieve a big wash sound, which unfortunately resulted in a lack of definition between instruments. In the circles, in my mind, I... On the other hand, people like Serban took a different approach. He uses less reverb and shorter decays. This plays a big role in the loudness war. Here's the point. The drier your mixes are, the bigger and cleaner they are. When the reverb tails are shorter, the track sounds cleaner. You can use reverb with a very short amount of decay. While you cannot hear it, you can feel it. Or you can use a chorus or slap delays. So, in a nutshell, if you use less reverb or use reverbs with shorter tails, you can achieve a louder, more separated mix. By the way, do you prefer a wet mix or a dry mix? There was a time when you wanted a sound like an electric guitar or a synth to sound mono, but at the same time, you wanted it to sound big and dry. Here's the technique that Jason Joshua and Dave Pensado suggest using. Simply pan the sound to the left or right, and then send it to a new bus. Then open up any reverb plugin with a very short decay and pan it to the opposite side. So if you pan it to the right, add reverb pan to the left. Adding small amounts of pre-delay can be beneficial sometimes. Let's listen. As you can hear, it sounds bigger, while the main signal stays dry and untouched. You can adjust the shadow's volume to your taste. Don't make this mistake again. If your kick doesn't sound big, don't just turn the volume up. It definitely ruins your mix. The way the ear works is that it perceives longer sounds as bigger sounds. So instead of adding volume or other processing, simply make your kicks longer. Let's listen to it in the track. We have a video about the optimum kick length pinned here. This technique could be achieved by Waves TrueVerb. TrueVerb lets you create a true, natural sounding room around a sound source and control the room size, frequency characteristics, and distance. This enables you to move a certain sound further or closer in the mix. It generates the virtual space by using two algorithms. The first is the early reflections. In this case, we only need early reflections to create front to back pan. Open an instance of Waves TrueVerb on any sound with the displayed settings. Let's listen to it on a track. Pay attention to how close the sound will get as soon as I turn it off. This yellow indicator would be your early reflections. By moving the yellow slider to the right, you can put the actual source down behind the mix or put it in front of the mix by moving it to the left. We're done. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section.